my left you are seeing three wonderful gentlemen who are the powerhouses of their own world they are the institutions in themselves they are the global people the personalities so on my next just right uh, left to me is mr rohit chohan i was talking to him he has been ex squadron leader and from the disciplined life to the free life an advisor and he's been uh, founder of the research analysis wing doing multiple things that we will get to know from him just in a while and then in the right in the middle we have mr avinash nishkabde and i was going through when he was talking how meticulous he is about his work how organized and how beautiful he is operating in the international arena then we have wonderful tajinder singh ji 360 degree nautica 17 years 30 countries and much more gcc reason he's been focusing upon so let's quickly hear from him them cause i won't be able to do justice to them if i would be speaking on their behalf so i'm passing on the mic quickly to them and let's hear from them first hand thank you so much thank you munish uh, dr munish i would say and thank you sahil for having me uh, so rohit uh, i am i am you know somebody who has walked in different uh, shoes started with government in fact started outside then with government for 15 years then worked uh, also did a startup took it up a wee bit as sold it off then you know thought of uh, venturing into the corporate world been working with various uh, corporate companies as permanent assignments also and now doing as advisory work uh, for strategy policy uh, you know how to navigate uh, government to government route for making businesses and how to go global and how to see things from uh, indian context of business and to customize it so that we can make most of our efforts and focus on research focus on real knowledge and less on rhetoric i think that's all i've been trying to do and help people in whatever little i know so so that's from me and uh, so uh, so and we are always open to help anyone anyway. if i know i'll do it if i don't know i'll definitely ensure that i'll connect you to the right person please wonderful so see this wonderful gentleman how he's helping us connecting the dots and now we'd love to know a little bit more about from avinashi do we have already heard about him so if you just can sit, maybe share quick 30 second thing so that then we move on with the panel yes i agree with you everyone is sick of me already so i don't want to bore you anymore but uh, i do have a interesting perspective to life and uh, i think it's great to be successful great to be you know i have a lot of wealth but there's a lot more to life than just money at the age, age of 19 i was going to go to himalayas i enrolled in ma philosophy and till date i've uh, they say i'm totally anti social because i've never had a smoke or a drink or drugs in my life so you know i do have a non profit that we've created that that's where i want to spend time also so i'm very passionate about the business life uh, but i do try to balance my life with the other side as well so you had enough of me in terms of business but i just thought i'd share the other side as well so thank you wonderful himalayas to the business journey incredible man let's have a huge round of applause for him thank you so much tajinder singh sir ji 360 degree nautica we would love to know the story yeah hi good evening everyone uh, it's lovely to be here uh, thank you sahil for inviting me punjab business network well uh, just to give you a brief uh, i am uh, uh, you know based out of uh, gcc for about 17 years built series of businesses out there uh, but before being in gcc i had uh, a very uh, decent stint in india worked with brands like godrej and trident uh, but the most significant of that was building up the first domestic bpo in india called sparsh so i don't know how many of you know this but sparsh was the first uh, bpo in india uh, which uh, i was co-founder in 2003 uh, we listed on the stock market in 2004 exited the business in 2005 and then that's what made me look at the alternate markets and middle east was was something that i chose because that was pretty much uh, an open and raw market for me <clears throat> so i went on the journey of uh, uh, being a serial entrepreneur over there uh and you know rest is all history uh, built up brands uh, across b2b segments technology um retail and then i slowly you know kind of uh, 
uh, you know, kind of evolved into being an investor in 2019-20, started looking at the young blood, uh, investing in the startups, good, great business ideas that could be scalable, invested in more than about uh, eight to nine startups until now in the last uh, couple of years uh, across the Middle East as well as in India. And um, yeah, that's my story for 17 years. If I have to just put it short, I built about more than 25 brands across 17 balance sheet with about 2000 plus people across six countries. So that's me. Thank you. Oh, wow, wow. Three short of applause for Mr. Tajinda Singh. Wonderful. 17 years of experience and altogether, if I put it rightly, we have more than 100 years of experience sitting on the dais as of now. Right? Though I'm not 100 years, I'm just a baby. So when it comes to me, I am, as I said, I'm just a baby, I'm still learning. So I'm a scientist. I'm the pioneer of personal e-mobility into India, artificial intelligence and robotics. How many of you know hoverboards? Anyone knows? Yeah. So I'm the one who's launched hoverboards in India. And we're the sole manufacturer of that in the entire Indian peninsula. Only four people in the world can make them, except China. They copy everything. <laughs> so, and then we have another venture, uh, Mentorex. We have created a startup ecosystem and that is how I'm very closely associated with Sahilji. He's like an elder brother to me. And uh, whereby if you need idea validation, bootstrapping, uh, TBIs, e-cells, mentors, funding, all sorts has already been taken care of in that. Currently we are operational in 65 countries. Our vision is to be in all the 200 countries by 2025. And uh, but we have dedicated this platform to all the 8 billion people on earth. I'm national advisor to our Prime, Honor, Prime Minister Modi ji. And now we're working on uh, uh, the Progressive India, Viksit Bharat Vision 2047. We will be completing our 100 years of uh, independence. Along with I own nine companies in coal mines, in brick kilns, in real estate, in education, robotics, artificial intelligence, and net tech. So that is all about me carrying uh, almost 20 years of experience and building it forward for the people, by the people, of the people, and dedicating it to the people across the world. So let's take this journey forward from here. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. I take it as a, you know, a recognition and appreciation, and it motivates a lot. So, Rohi ji, uh, when we were talking about, uh, you know, uh, as you, you have been part of the government as well. So, whenever government kicks in, the very first thing that comes is taxes. So, people mm -hmm. try to stay away from it. I really want to know from you how, as businesses are not aware of it, that government is there to support the ecosystem. How people can use or how we can make them aware that they can use government route for uh, business expansions and how they can, you know, use the government leverage. Please. Thank you. So, yeah, I mean, traditionally, when, when anybody hears of government, it's like he's going to take something out of us. Uh, but, like you said, uh, the perspective of the government also in the last 10, 10 odd years, if I have to uh, you know, put it across, has changed dramatically in India. So earlier the policy and the overall collector kind of a mindset which was there in India, uh, what British left, is far changed and now it's more about enabling. So, so whenever now any policy in government when it is made, the overall strategic direction is that how do you enable the industry both for organic growth and for you know uh, having an intervention so that government and classic example is semiconductor vision which uh, which India is trying to carve in it's a huge huge one, believe you me uh, I mean we were nowhere three years back just nowhere into it and now we are making strides and and big strides and probably the importance of this work will be visible to people after next 10 years. Not, not before, it's going to take time to build that fabrication capacity and the sophistication of processes and engineering which is there. So what I'm trying to say here is that government has got great schemes, whether it's about any BLI or anything. Each ministry, wherever your domain is there, you can leverage that also. We feel shy reaching to them. I think it's worthwhile doing it. If you take the teacher head on who punishes more, he'll stop doing it. So, so I think that's the analogy you can use. And when you talk about going global, the government government route is generally being followed by all the important and big businesses. Uh, they, they leverage consulates, they leverage embassy route and the chamber of commerce each country has. So if you tomorrow wants to work, you know, expand your business to Germany, if you take an appointment with the Indian Chamber of Commerce, uh, Germany Business Council or Chamber of Commerce, they'll host you, they'll tell, <laughs> you invite you for a gala dinner also and they'll have you there because they want their money. 
But the point is for you also it's a win-win situation because you want their market and their you know what investment you want to commit, you want to take make returns out of it. And India is also happy, you are billing them in dollars and getting them here. So it's all about the perspective what you build there. It's about the thought process. So government is no more a lion or a kind of a somebody who should be afraid. Rather, you should take it up front and leverage whatever is there in the from the government schemes, and also leverage government as a as a tool to reach abroad, to export. Because if India is exporting their culture and every identity as a brand, I think we should you know become part of that vehicle. Wonderful round of applause for Rohit ji. So this is incredible. So rather than being scared, we can be friends with the government. And when you're talking about gala dinners, the honor, 55 of these are my friends. Yeah. I've been to so many gala dinners. And he's absolutely right. They host you, they greet you, they recognize you, as well as tons of opportunities abroad. So that route can be explored very diligently and very beautifully. And uh, taking a cue from that, uh, Avinash ji, how can Indian counterparts, this can strategize and structure offices in other countries and uh, appoint the uh, di uh, distributors as you are already, I would say, mammoth, huge, you know, magnanimous in wonderful different countries. So can you throw light on this? I think uh, Indians are born entrepreneurs and I think now the Indian diaspora is everywhere. So you find in all walks of life, in fact, it was uh, Ten years ago, when I was in Silicon Valley, it was unwritten rule that you need to have an Indian in top four to attract some funding. <laughs> and uh, now you look at these global companies, uh, all these big CEOs have Indian uh, background. So, you know, India, being Indian is quite well respected, at least in the US, I would say, and worldwide. And I think um, it's become, in this knowledge age, uh, it's become easier to find, uh, you know, right connects. And uh, certainly, I see that all walks of life, Indians have done very, very well all across the globe. And uh, it's a lot easier these days than what it was, you know, 25, 30, 30 years ago. Wow, wow, this is incredible. So, see how wonderfully we heard from uh, Gunas sir that one Indian is necessary in among top four to get them funding in the Silicon Valley. So imagine what kind of global power we command. As of now, we are more than 1.45 billion, the largest consumer market in the world, the largest intellect pool we have. So what we are scared of? Let's gear up, guys, and let's make it happen. And when we say that let's make it happen, we have another wonderful gentleman, Tajinder Singh Ji, who has made it happen already in the GCC. And uh, so, sir, when we're talking about all this Indians growing and GCC commands a very strategic, you know, I would say, position on the global uh, map. So, what is your futuristic vision towards bridging the gap between India and GCC region, especially what I believe GCC is our next go to market? See, I'll tell you, uh, if you look at uh, GCC conventionally from the last 20 25 years, GCC was always looked at as a labor market. You know, people used to go from uh, various parts of Asia, uh, more as laborers. You know, there is something called as kafil system over there, which means you are a you are a you are a labor class, or you you belong to some uh, Arab guy and you work for him in his factory, in his in his uh, you know business or whatever it is. But I think uh, now it has opened up a lot, and we have seen, uh, especially in the in the the government of Honorable Modi ji, that a lot of visits he has made and the counterparts of uh, the rulers uh, from that part of the world have come to India and made the visits, especially from UAE, Qatar and uh, Saudi, we have seen quite an active participation. There's a lot of investment that's happening in India from those part of the world uh, <clears throat> and, and that's happening in a, in a larger ticket size. So, uh, India-UK relationships are pretty much established, US has been a old uh, you know, ally to India. Uh, but Middle East is something, the GC is something that's coming up very fast and more in, in this aspects of uh, business. India is a very big exporter to that market, you know, 95% of the stuff in GCC is basically imported, you know. It's, it's not a manufacturing hub, it's, it's an importing hub. Uh, we, had free, we have free ports over there, we have a lot of imports uh, for everything from, uh, you could say, a, a needle to a, to a car, everything is imported. Uh, so it's it's a great market. It's opened up, and now there are a lot of 
visas over there which are for entrepreneurs. Uh, setting up companies is not that difficult. You don't have to go as a labor now. You can very easily scale business. There are a lot of investors which are uh, which are locals and also the investors who are from the global side. You know, so you see a lot of investment companies now looking at GCC, investing into the opportunities because they have known that now it is moving away from being a labor market to a global player. You know, and we we seeing Dubai. Uh, very actively, by, and Saudi is coming up very strongly on that. You know, we've seen a lot of marketing in the last few months on Saudi. So this market is opening up, and I think India has a great opportunity in leveraging the uh, the the, uh, the the benefit of this market. I've done it in last 17 years in that market. Um, yeah, I agree. It's a difficult market. It's not a very easy market, but yes, uh, difficult is what pays you the money. Uh, easy doesn't pay you the money. So uh, it's a it's a changing market. I think when uh, when you look at any markets outside India, uh, GCC I think would be the next uh, obvious evaluating point for most of the entrepreneurs in times wow. to come. Wow, incredible! When you talked about that, it's difficult. I always say that as long as you haven't done it, it's difficult. But once you are inside it, it becomes easier as long as you are dedicated for it. Absolutely, and devoted for it. So, uh, so you've been talking about like uh, what, what the cue I'm taking here is that yes, GCC, the government itself, they are very keen on investing in India. As I'm already investor of our, uh, I'm already the national advisor of our honorable Prime Minister Modi ji on AI and robotics. So they they even heavily want to invest in the semiconductors as you you've been talking about because India is going to be the next biggest hub when we're talking about semiconductors. Yeah, yeah, India is the next big story undoubtedly. You know, they, it's, it's just not the, the the government that's talking about. I think the globally. When I'm outside India, I mean, I've, I've been part of GC for so long. I mean, last couple of years, I'm hearing India is a big story now, in times to come. And uh, as we say, you know, uh, uh, it's just for example, we're all cricket lovers, but uh, when you learn to play the bounce, you have to play at the perth, uh, pitch of the Perth, you know, in Australia. That's when you run the and, bounce. And, so and, the, and the beauty about Indians is that they can play on any of the pitches. Just offer them a pitch. <laughs> if you cannot even offer them the pitch, they will even make a pitch. Just give them a level playing field. And, and from there on, um, Avinash ji, um, how easy is it to maybe handpick companies and uh, take them global or maybe help them or guide them, create a global model, the ones who are present in India? Let me just point out a few things that I've noticed and perception, right reality, I don't know, but the perception, why things, and I know a lot of companies who've come to India and they say, no, I don't want to deal uh, here. Because of certain ways that we accept things in the Indian society, you know, things like chalta hai, uh, things like, you know, ek inch idhar, udhar, yeah, sab chalta hai, you know, adjust kar lo. You know, if there is some quality issues and things like that. So, while I agree with everyone that India has got huge potential, it really has. It has got intellect, like you said, we do have People, uh, people are extremely intelligent, extremely hardworking, but I think the work culture has to be different to really compete at the world level. And unless that happens, no matter how you feel good about the government policies and potential, potential is not reality. To make it into reality, you have to compete at the world level. And so I think that is a thing for entrepreneurs to, you know, be, so quality conscious that you want to beat the damn Chinese and the damn any other manufacturers or whoever it is. If you can do that, then the geopolitical is in your favor to really achieve those things. And it starts from small because, you know, we are, a lot I've seen is driven by profit. I want to make more money. I'll take shortcuts. I think that has to change overall to achieve. But I totally agree. India has absolutely amazing potential to really be the dominant economy in the world. Wow, that's for sure. We are going to be the most powerful economy in the world as we are already working on. We had a vision earlier. I was sitting with our Honorable Prime Minister, India being the 5 trillion economy. And you won't believe it, I believe we are going to be achieving that in the next a year, a year and a half. Now, the next vision itself, we are not putting a number. Let's be the biggest economy in the world. And that uh, we hope for maybe another another decade or so. It's, it's going to be possible. I get the wrong side of the road every time mm -hmm. because uh, you know when <laughs> talking about cricket, when India used to play Australia, mm -hmm. uh, and let's say India wins, mm -hmm. 
the Indians will say, hey, you're Australian, you know, yeah, we won, mm -hmm. you did. And if uh, India wins, uh, or the other one, say Australia wins, and they say, no, you're Indian, we, we, you know, you lost. <laughs> so no matter which way, but you know, uh, for me, once you're Indian, you are Indian, and we still feel very proud, and I'd love to see the day when India can be the global superpower in the economic context, and uh, it has all the potential. I mean, you've seen it, how it has done in terms of IT, the technology side of things. Uh, the entrepreneur mindset is really most amazing here, uh, and yeah, I, I hope it does get there. Wonderful. Have, have you ever seen a woman with a smile and a steady eyes? You can see Anuradha right now. You know, she's passing smiles to me in stereo eyes. You are a moderator, finish it. Why did it quickly? I I'm think just... all of them are saying that because we No, no, so I'm, I'm saying I'm giving you compliments. Right in the middle of the panel. She's saying this to me, I'm the next one. Yeah. <laughs> thank, thank God I'm not the next one. I, if had I been the third panel, so your panel is done. Go enjoy her, her food. So we're just winding up in another, another minute, in a minute and a half. Thank you so much. So, just quickly, uh, taking from here, I would uh, really love to know from Rohi ji that uh, most, I won't say, I won't use a technical term, most or this and that. So, businesses sometimes, they don't know what they're doing or where they're headed to. So, what do you think, what should be, how they can gain the clarity of vision and how they can get to know that what's their market visibility globally? Yeah, sure. Uh, I'll take 30 more. So just to first to take you from the like, sir has already mentioned, I think it's very important. We need to be professional first. That's what he meant. So because we can do a lot of chest thumping and self boosting, but the point is we are not damn good professional still to scale up globally and, and build those product and solutions which can be accepted at quality standard globally. So I think we need to do lots and lots of work in that respect. And also from GDP context, I think it is equally important that we should raise our per capita income because the true realization of wealth is only when, when we all become rich. Uh, so, so that's the, from that point. And secondly, coming to your question on clarity, uh, see, the, what I always say and what I say is that, like I was saying to another gentleman I met uh, before that is that, don't go into too much Angreji. Think from the point what actually it is. Think from the very nuts and bolts. If you don't understand it, please don't do it. Simple. Please don't. If you don't understand, just don't do it. Just don't go by McKenzie kind of a slide and uh, flurry things. That's not. That's how not business works. If you understand it, if you know how it is, and if you have a clarity, yeah, seek help, seek support. There are great institutions around in every city of India. But we are we, we think that only a son will go for admission and only will seek a help from professor. No man, they are they are being damn paid for so much amount of giving consulting help and to help every business and people. Do seek advice. Reach out to the director. Reach out to the people if you don't understand. And nowadays, with the digital revolution, everybody is doing podcast and giving uh, learning modules. That's another way of going about. But try and understand it. And if you are not comfortable, don't. We are those shoes. I would just say that. So if you don't know it, don't do it. But if you do it, jump into it, be dedicated, be devoted and make it happen. So last um, question from here on, I'm going to take from Tajinder Ji. Sir, how investors and startups, they can leverage the potential of GCC market? As I'm, I'm again, I will say that GCC holds a wonderful strategic position on the global map. So in 30 seconds or in 45 seconds, you can do so. Thank you. Uh, in the uh, paucity of time, I would just request the, this question to be limited to Mr. Uh, yeah. Yeah, Mr. Tejendra. Yeah. Thank okay. you so much. So I'll start from where Avinash uh, uh, last uh, submission was that we need to be professional. See, uh, I totally agree that uh, we are very mesmerized as entrepreneurs in India with numbers that we have in India. So we say, okay, fine, that is the chalta attitude, you know, I can, if he doesn't, if I can't sell it to him, I'll have uh, so many other hundreds of people to sell. But this is not what uh, global market wants, you know, when we are globally, and I have seen entrepreneurs and not just one, I can, I can tell you numbers of entrepreneurs who have been in the, in the GCC or elsewhere in UK. And their whole uh, delivery, their whole outlook transforms when they are in that market. So that's the culture basically, you know. 
it's always a challenge of last 10 percent you know it's not that we are not uh, great players we are excellent entrepreneurs we're excellent uh, uh, businessman as far as globally is concerned and as human being as knowledge the content uh, people you know and that's why we are we're sitting on the major brands in us uh, you know as indians but we somewhere compromise on that and and i feel that the startups uh, coming to the question that uh, uh, that he posted to me was that how startups and uh, investors can leverage well gcc as i told you is a, is a very upcoming market it's a very promising land it's opened up a lot you now get uh, a free access to open the company saudi is opening up i'm sure uh, after saudi uh, kuwait and other countries will follow and other uh, you know so there will be great opportunities for the investors to look at a lot of startups um, i don't know if you have seen startups in bahrain kuwait any of those you can browse on the internet there are great startups happening over there dubai is, is a big market for the startups there are a lot of vcs a uh, lot of angel uh, uh, network over there uh, so it, the ecosystem is really warming up over there you know and there's a great startup there's a great opportunity for the startups to you know expand and attract the local investors in the gcc as well as for the investors in india to look at the startups beyond india it's a great market as you know uh, most of the uh, earlier speakers in this event and and my fellow friends have said that you know it's 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 just the global stuff you know so uh, you know we don't we don't want to limit ourselves uh, now at this place when you are a builder of a product or services <coughs> try to see globally as a market this is one of them of course as i said it's a promising one as investor also while you still invest in india which i do i have invested in couple of startups i mean in fact four startups in india but that is a restricts me in in investing in the gcc or uk or us i mean all of these are promising market provided you are getting your roi so so it doesn't make difference so i think uh, going global is it already exists it's just that we have to uh, see gcc also as a market and wow. that's that's, wow. that's what it is that's wonderful uh, tejinder sir so see this is what we have uh, got to know from these three wonderful gentlemen so on the stage so india is a dominant global power and we are going to be the next we are not going to be just the next in thing we are going to be the only thing in the world so let's all gear up let's all join hands the way sahil sir always keep on making efforts the punjab angels network i will call him that you are the angel right so let's keep our growth story intact and if you feel you need any help any guidance i on behalf of all these three wonderful gentlemen on behalf of sahil ji as well that we all are here and let's all join hands and keep this vixit bharat 2047 story intact and be the biggest thing ever possible in this global enigma on that note your host and those for tonight signing off thank you so much